Developing a timeline for the Romero Dead series is a difficult task because George never intended the movies to link up, which is why he used different characters for each one and he allowed the timeline to slide. Each movie takes place in the time frame that it was filmed in. So therefore, the first film takes place in the 60s, Dawn takes place in the 70s, and so on and so forth. Although the actual settings of the films are not decades apart. So what we're going to do is break down exactly how long after the initial outbreak each movie took place and examine the different characters of zombies in each. So the first film was released in 1968, although the date is not going to be important to the timeline. So we know a few things. We know that the film takes place on the day that the time changes, which was apparently April 28th in 1968. Johnny and Barbara discuss this in the car in the beginning, right before they're coming to get you, Bob Gunn. Later on in the film, a newscast talks about the first reporting of the undead attacks two days ago. And if I know crack 1960s Pittsburgh journalism, we're assuming that the first reports went out pretty quickly after the attacks began. So we can pretty safely assume that this is between two to four days after the first rising of the dead. A couple of quick notes about the zombies themselves. They're referred to as ghouls here, and they're noticeably afraid of bright lights and especially fire. This is a major plot point in the film as the protagonists use fire quite a bit to evade the ghouls. Also worth pointing out is that the opening graveyard zombie breaks the rules of the Romero zombies in that it's like flojo fast, and although it has the perfect opportunity to eat Johnny, it leaves him alone to chase after Barbara. This is pretty different than almost all other Romero zombies that are pretty single-minded in their pursuit of food. The guys use tools as well, which is a recurring theme that we'll see in the later films, and it's worth pointing out that this is the film that wrote the rules. The dead came back to life, eat the flesh of the living, and can only be killed by a blow to the head or fire. Beat them or burn them. They go up pretty easy. We also set up the rules of what happens when a zombie bites you. Little Karen is bitten by one of the ghouls and becomes horribly sick, eventually having the infection kill her and turn her into one of them, although an incredibly adorable one. It's important to note that you don't have to have been bitten by a zombie to turn into one here. The newscast states that all of the unburied dead are coming back to life as a result of radiation from a Venus probe destroyed in our atmosphere. The best reasons for zombies ever. So by the time the dawn of dead came around, it was a full 10 years later in real time. And because of the sliding time scale, the film takes place in 1978. As for time frame, one of the news correspondents says, you haven't listened to me for three weeks. So chances are that this is still pretty early on in the outbreak. Assuming that this guy started giving his opinion early on in the game, we assume that the movie picks up about three to four weeks after the first attack. It's clear that things are still early and TV stations are still broadcasting and police are still dealing with matters that aren't related to the unliving, like shooting minorities because some things never change. Early on in the movie, Fran announces that she's three to four months pregnant and by the ending of the movie, she's about eight months in, giving us a range of about four months. Peter refers to them as zombies for the first time, and it looks like they're still afraid of fire. They utilize tools occasionally, and there's a few hints of them retaining memories of their former lives, and man, do they really hate getting water sprayed in their faces. Day of the Dead came out in 1985, and it's one of the trickier ones to really pin down. Clearly, our sliding time frame is still in effect, and we're now in 1985, even if seven years haven't passed in the context of the film. So there's a lot of debate over how long after the outbreak this one takes place, but there's definitely a lot of clues that point to this one being earlier on than most people think. The fact that it looks like almost everyone else on Earth is dead, and things are looking extremely bleak leads people to think that this is a few years into the invasion, and many people think that it takes place well after Land of the Dead. But there's several things that seem to prove otherwise. They mentioned that the whole operation was thrown together in a couple of days, so having enough supplies and alcohol to last them several years seems unlikely especially with how McDermott drinks it. The helicopter itself indicates that they haven't been there that long. The fact that it was still well maintained and they have plenty of fuel indicates an earlier time frame. Also, sadly, the soldier's demeanor towards Sarah is the biggest indicator, with her being the only female, and the soldier's clearly unhinged. I hate to say that I feel like more horrible things would have happened to her if this was a more prolonged period of time. So seeing as just how quickly things escalated over a period of four months at dawn, I'm only placing this one at about a year after the initial outbreak. Day gives us some new wrinkles with the zombies. Fire is never even brought up here, so we don't know if the zombies are still afraid of it. They're definitely more aggressive here, snarling and acting more like wild animals when attacking. Plus, we get our first real zombie memory moment with the introduction of Bub, a zombie who remembers how to call his Aunt Alicia and to shoot a gun. No one calls them zombies here, and the closest we get to a recurring name is dumb fucks, which is my favorite word. It's a lot better than zombie anyway. 
Land of the Dead is another tricky one, and one that no one can really agree on in terms of time, and the only indication that we have in the amount of time passing since the outbreak is when a character states that they haven't seen a car drive out of the city in three years. Slack says that she's never left the city, which could indicate that the city's been there for 20 years or so, but I tend to think that uh, she's just lived in the city all of her life and never really traveled out, and then when the zombie outbreak began, she became trapped there, so that leaves us with the whole three-year thing, which makes sense, although if you've lived in Pittsburgh, you're hard-pressed to spend more of a day or so downtown before you leave. The zombies get some new tricks here since they remember a lot of stuff, and then we get another zombie lead in Big Daddy. I think we're supposed to think that the zombies are sort of good guys here. I don't know, sometimes we are, and most times we're not. I think we're supposed to root for the zombies, but only in the specific scenes that the movie wants us to. Oh, and the dead are called stenchers, which is the most awkward non-use of the Z word to date. Diary of the Dead takes us all the way back to the beginning, but keep in mind that it's not a remake or a reboot since the sliding timeline moves all of the start times around anyway. This one just takes place in the first few days of the outbreak. The word zombie is never uttered, and there's really nothing new added to the whole lore in this one except for the fact that zombies seem to teleport in large groups into previously empty areas. I don't think we're supposed to root for the zombies in this one, but it did anyway. The final entry, Survival of the Dead, is the only film in the series to feature a recurring character. The soldier from Diary shows up again here, linking the two films. This is his easiest film to also place in the timeline, as we get an intro in the first few days of the outbreak, and then a convenient little title screen telling us that it's three weeks later. We're shown the whole zombies go about their regular business thing again, and they figure out how to eat things besides humans. Hmm. Following the trend of giving zombies ridiculous nicknames, they're referred to here as Deadheads. I mean, seriously, can we just call them zombies? Or maybe dumb fucks again. Okay, so the technical order goes like this. Night and Diary take place within the first few days. Survival and Dawn of the Dead take place about three to four weeks into the outbreak, but Dawn stretches out a lot further into time. Uh, Day takes place about a year after the initial outbreak. And finally, Land of the Dead takes place about three years or maybe a little bit later after the initial outbreak. Um, so that's it. That's the timeline of the Romero movies. If you disagree, please give your detailed reasons in the comments below because I'm, I'm pretty pretty firm on this one. Uh, coming up, we've got some more timelines. Uh, the Phantasm one will be up uh, in just a couple of weeks, so enjoy it. Subscribe and uh, check it out. We'll see you again.